federal fight. As Alberta's new premier works on a sovereignty act, Saskatchewan is the latest province pushing for more independence from Ottawa. Just days ago, Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe released a policy paper saying he's prepared to fight what he calls federal intrusion into provincial jurisdiction of natural resources. According to the document called Drawing the Line, federal climate policies will cost Saskatchewan households and industries $111 billion between 2023 and 2035. As for the next steps, the paper says there could be legislation clarifying constitutional rights belonging to the province and a push for more autonomy over, among others, immigration policy. More details are expected in Premier Mo's upcoming throne speech on October 26. So how far is Saskatchewan willing to go in its fight against Ottawa? And with Alberta demanding more autonomy as well, is Canada headed for another constitutional debate? Let's ask the man who is pushing back against Ottawa. Joining me now is Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe. Uh, hello, Premier. Welcome to Question Period. It's always good to have you on the show. Um, you know, I want to talk about timing because timing is to politics what location is to real estate. So, and, and you asked your finance department for this analysis. Why are you doing this now? Well, what we're uh, doing is, uh, and what we did here this week, was re essentially release a, a white paper that looks at, uh, one, the, the historical relationship uh, as it pertains to uh, the development of natural resources primarily between the province of Saskatchewan and the federal government throughout time, you know, throughout our 110 plus years that we've uh, been in the, in the federation. And then also looks at where we are today and, and really um, then is focusing on uh, what Saskatchewan uh, has before it. And, and we're on the cusp of uh, some tremendous investment in uh, our province, uh, which will create jobs and create opportunity. And uh, so what this document is that we released uh, is really a, a traditional walk through time on the FedProv relations, but also uh, is the foundation on which uh, we are going to uh, most certainly uh, take provincial action within uh, the, the confines of, of the Federation to make for a stronger Saskatchewan, yeah. which ultimately we believe will make for a stronger Federation so, of Canada as well. I want to go back to that timing issue because I really do think timing is uh, is important. And, uh, you know, in, in Alberta, UCP leader Danielle Smith campaigned for the top job, you know, promising this sovereignty act. So you, you, you both seem to be going more or less in the same direction, demanding more power. So is this a coincidence or did you inspire each other? Are you talking to each other? Yeah, I, I don't know what um, any sovereignty act would look like uh, in Alberta. I haven't seen one that's been drafted. We've been working on this uh, for a period of time. Um, I, I don't know that if the timing would be considered a coincidence uh, or or, or what ex exactly with the change in leadership or the change in premier now in, in the province of Alberta. This is uh, an act that is focused on, on Saskatchewan and, and unlocking that potential that we have in our province of Saskatchewan and taking control where we can as a province within, uh, within the, the constitution that we respect uh, in this nation uh, to, to ensure that we are, are going to be able to achieve uh, what, we, what we can. So, you know, obviously you can imagine, uh, you, you, you've seen that too, that constitutional experts are now obviously piping in, uh, you know, saying you would need to reopen the constitution, you could need to get the approval of seven provinces. We know what happens when we reopen the constitution. Uh, some of us are old enough to remember. So you need the approval of seven provinces, 50% yeah. of the population and, and the federal government. So is that what you are asking for and I'm wondering if you think that that's what the people of Saskatchewan want. No, and that's not what we're asking for. Uh, listen, the, uh, any constitutional changes that uh, may be required uh, would be similar to what we uh, saw how, how Quebec unilaterally changed the constitution uh, recently, which the prime minister said was fine, they could do that. And so we view uh, that if there is any unilateral, unilateral changes that need to happen uh, with the constitution as we move ahead, uh, we'd do it in a similar so fashion. So like what, as, give me an example, give me an did. example. Uh, you. you know, listen. What would you do unilaterally? I'm not going to get into the details of what uh, some legislation might ultimately look like because I, I can't reveal that uh, until it's uh, really um, introduced in, in our legislature most certainly. Um, but one of the focuses is, is we are going to have a piece of legislation uh, in our legislati legislature uh, this fall uh, to really uh, reassert our, our provincial right to develop the 
the natural resources within the boundaries of, of the province of Saskatchewan as per the intent and the spirit of the Constitution of Canada. Everything we do will be uh, within the Constitution of Canada that we, uh, that we respect. So I, I want to go back to your unilaterally but within the Constitution. Which one is it? Is it unilaterally, as you said, Quebec has done, or will you do this within or respecting the Constitution? How far are you willing to go in an arm wrestling match with Ottawa? Listen, uh, we think there is, uh, within the Constitution as it sits today, there most certainly uh, is a much space for uh, a province like Saskatchewan and other provinces to reassert uh, their, their provincial jurisdiction, in particular when it comes to uh, the development of our, of our natural resources. That is a provincial in jurisdiction. And listen, this, this isn't about uh, primarily changing the Constitution. It isn't even about the federal government, um, what Saskatchewan's, the conversation we're raising in Saskatchewan. It's what we can do as a province to ensure that we unlock this great potential that is before us to produce some of the most sustainable products that are available on earth today and make them available to other Canadians and North Americans to create energy and food security for our continent. And so this is a, a conversation that very much is about Saskatchewan. Yeah, but inevitably you're going to have to have that conversation with Ottawa. But I want to move on to, you know, while you drafted this white paper you did not uh, consult with indigenous leaders and that's that's what they're, they're they're saying so the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations said in a statement and I'll read it to you Premier Mo talks about the constitutional rights of the province yet he and his government continually ignore First Nations inherent in treaty rights as well as our section 35 constitutional right uh, First Nations do not know what the effect of this plan will be because we were not even provided with any information on this plan. Can I ask you, uh, Premier Mo, why not consult with them? So we, we, we consulted with Saskatchewan individuals. Many of them are Indigenous, many were not. Uh, our MLAs consulted with folks far and wide, uh, not only throughout the last summer, but throughout the last uh, many months and years. Uh, we had a, a small consultation group of an MLA and a previous MLA that went out and myself was uh, across the province doing open town halls as well as working with individuals across the province on uh, you know what are the, where do the opportunities lie and where do the challenges lie uh, in us achieving those opportunities and so many many individuals have been consulted we didn't openly uh, consult business groups uh, we didn't openly consult corporations and we didn't openly consult uh, uh, you know municipal leaders indigenous leaders we consulted with individuals across Saskatchewan um, and and I and section 35 is a, a relationship uh, uh, between uh, Indigenous folks and, and the, the nation of Canada as opposed to the province. Um, and what we are trying to do here is to assert the provincial um, uh, constitutional um, jurisdiction that we have to make Saskatchewan a better a better place for all, and that includes Indigenous people as well as non-Indigenous people. But it wasn't people. mentioned we have in a, your white paper. A rich history uh, of, the, of this, engage this was not mentioned. This was not mentioned in your white paper. Can you do this without consulting with no, First no, Nations? No, no, no. We did. We did consult with individuals across the province. Is, is what I'm saying. I, I, whether they were Indigenous or non-Indigenous, we didn't consult with with groups or or, or even uh, you know municipal or community leaders, we consulted with individuals within uh, those those communities. And I would say this is a road that we actually walk together and have been walking together for some period of time in, in Saskatchewan. This is most certainly um, an opportunity that is uh, here for Saskatchewan, all Saskatchewan people, uh, whether they be Indigenous or non-Indigenous. And we most certainly uh, will work together like we always, always have uh, with all communities in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks so much, Joyce. You have a great day today. Okay.